I feel like really nervous and just getting a text from a friend just means a lot right now. I was like, oh, kind of almost cried. Hi, ID. I'm Rosé and this is my ID Ask. I'm going to be answering uh, questions from friends, collaborators and my number ones. Oh, got a text. Oh my God, this is so cute. Oh my gosh, what? So my friend Suju says, Rosie, we are so proud of you. Can you share a favorite line from a song on your album and can you tell us why? That's so hard. This is the hardest question. Like it's actually giving me anxiety. I think the most fun line is, I can forgive you for a lot of things for not giving me back my Tiffany rings, but I'll never forgive you for one thing, my dear. You wasted my prettiest years. That's a fun one. I'm not gonna say it's my favorite because I might, I'm probably gonna sleep at night being like, oh my God, but this is my favorite. <laughs> but it, I definitely think that's like one of the most fun lines I have in the album. Thank you, Suju. Oh, Benny Blanco. <laughs> Interesting. How did you guys get this? <laughs> if you were gonna die tomorrow, what's the last meal you'd have? If the world <laughs> was ending, my last meal would be this tuna kimchi stew that my mom makes and just anything my mom would make. I'd like whatever she gives me, I would gobble it up and that'd probably be my best meal. Wow, Benny, hi. Thank you for the question. <laughs> this is crazy. <laughs> Petra Collins. Oh my gosh, this is fun, guys. <laughs> okay, Petra asks, if you were to describe this album in three films, what would they be? XOXO Petra. Um, How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, Sex in the City, and Inside Out, I think. <laughs> How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days, because like, aren't they like kind of like a toxic couple? They kind of like, they're a bit toxic, but but it's hot and, and they're obsessed. Sex in the City because my friends always say I'm such a carry. <laughs> and Inside Out because it's just like, it was an album um, of me getting to know um, how I how I deal with my emotions and, and being very honest, open and honest about my feelings. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Petra. Miss you. Brie Larson, whoa, oh my gosh. How do you feel after you perform live? I personally get a huge adrenaline rush. Um, my friends and family would come to see me after shows and they would be like, oh my gosh, you must be so tired. Thank you for meeting me. And I'm I'm more than happy to meet my friends and fam family after a show. Like I have all this energy built up inside of me. So I'm usually really like ready to celebrate. Um, that I'm like off work and <laughs> I did a great job, hopefully. Um, yeah, and I feel really energized. Oh. So I just got a text from Pablo Vitar. Thank you so much. I'm so I'm so excited. And she asks, what kind of music do you like to listen to when you're not working? I love you. Lately, I've been listening to my album <laughs> um, because I've noticed that once you release music, it kind of becomes the world's. So I'm trying to enjoy my last few moments with it by myself um, because it's still like, they still feel like my babies. But then if I like put it up into the world, I feel like I'm going to feel like, I don't know. It, it, it always feels a bit different once it's out. So I've been trying to listen to my album as much as I can lately. Usually it stresses me out, but now it's like all wrapped up. And that's what I have to settle with. So yeah. Ooh. So I got a text from Hannah Diamond. Thank you, Hannah, for sending in your question. She asks, who would be on the creative dream team to bring your artistic vision to life? I think I may have gotten my my dream team, which is which is Bruno. Um, so I had APT, um, the song, and um, everyone was so excited about it. And it was definitely like a big mission to kind of have that come to life and how can I like bring that energy um, and live up to that expectation was a big uh, project for me but I feel like when Bruno jumped on it it was like like it was there the energy was there and it was like perfect so I think I got my dream team Bruno Mars and Rosé <laughs>
<laughs> oh, got a text from Bella Poch. Um, she asks, I'm so excited to hear about your debut album. What was the process like creating the new sound for your album? Thank you, Bella, for the text. Um, uh, the process was pretty organic. I would say days that I thought would be more like experiments kind of ended up being like part of the album um i started the whole thing you know kind of fresh I, I had never really been fully a part of the songwriting process before so for me it was like okay i've just got to start someday and let's and that's today and i i, I went in um kind of you know thinking I, I'm going to learn a lot from this and even though I'm not perfect I'm going to push through and one day I will um, <laughs> create this album but then as those days kind of stacked on um, my friends and family started responding and, and saying that I should wrap this album up and really make it something and so um, I trusted in their opinions and I'm very grateful for them because um, I ended up continuing to do that over the past year and that's how this um, album was created. The studio ended up becoming a big like, safe place for me and um, I felt like a therapy session <laughs> every day actually. Oh, she asked another question. Um, are there any fun studio stories you have from recording your debut album? I think the making of APT and it was like, I think it was midnight and I was teaching the boys how to play Korean drinking games. I was like, I'll teach you guys some Korean drinking games. And um, my favorite drinking game is APT because it's like the most simple. It's very straightforward. Um, and so I was like, oh, this is how you play it. Um, Rosie's random game. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, but, uh, and they like kind of like all lost their mind. They were like, what? They were like, oh my god, this is the best. And I'm like, what? Like, why do you like it so much? And they were like, again, again, again. So I was like, we should write a song um, with the with this game. Um, but it was too late in the day. And the next day I rocked up to the studio and I brought it back up. And then that's when we wrote APT. So that was like a fun little moment that I remember. Devin Lee Carlson. Hi, Devin. Um, she sent a question. She asks, if you could have written any pop song, what would it be? Love you. I think I would have written We Found Love by Rihanna. I love that song so much. Um, we love Rihanna. I think it's just such a, it's like a song that makes you feel young and excited for love. And it makes you want to party and dance but then also be like you just you, it makes you feel like you want to be in love in a hopeless place <laughs> um, I think it's the best and I love that era of Rihanna last text Amy Amy Allen just texted um, love you Amy she co-wrote a lot of my, my songs on the album and she's the most talented person on earth she asks Rosie if you could pick a room in a house a time of day and a food to be eating for your fans while they listen to the album start to finish, what would they be? That is the best question. My gosh, so thoughtful, of course. Definitely in bed, in your own bed, in your favorite blanket. I would suggest listening to it at either 3 a.m. or midnight. What food? Something sweet. I think it should be something sweet. I'll go for my Haribo sour, sour gummy bears. And I would have a beer next to me. <laughs> just a nice cold one. Just one. Just one for the album. That's the cutest question. Love you, Amy. All right. So I think that's it. Um, no more texts are coming through. Um, thank you all for watching. I'm Rosé and that was my ID Asks. Bye, ID. Ah, pata, pata, ah, pata.